Let's try to say it in the same exact tone so we sound like Okay, robot. one, two, three. Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to the International Brendan Fraser Film Festival of North Carolina. Ooh, that got good at the end. <laughs> We're happy to have you here with us. Today is an exciting day because... It's a classic. We get to watch now and then. I kind of want to explain the Bembridge Scholars. So we created the Bembridge Scholars because... Well, we didn't create the Bembridge Scholars. The Bembridge Scholars aren't a real thing. Listen, but they are a hallowed society. (laughs) This is a society of scholars who are fans of... Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. This is this is a very sacred subject of it is. research, and it requires we take it very seriously. We do. It requires the utmost care, a plan of action, mm-hmm. and lots of notes and a rating system, which. I just have to say, we have a lot of stuff rated on here, Mm -hmm. but this poster is so large that it doesn't fit into the camera. But this rating system- it's on there, I promise. It is the height of sophistication. (laughs) Watching his entire filmography- There are at least 66 titles, and because he's still working, the list is going to grow. The list is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, today we're watching Now and Then. As a kid, I do remember him being in this. Well, I don't. You were saying last night that like you've only seen it a couple times. I mean, you she is two and a half years older than I am. So maybe it's just an age thing, but like it was a staple at sleepovers for me when I was a kid. No, I think it was really popular with my generation, two and a half years <laughs> uh, older than you <laughs> as well. But I think we were just doing other, we were like doing dances and stuff. Yeah. My friends and I watched a lot of movies, Mm -hmm. and this was one of the classic ones. Like, we would watch it a couple times a year at least. Um, So you've seen it a lot. I've seen this movie a lot. No, because I have not seen it since I was a kid. We're going to rent it for $2.99 on Amazon Prime. So now we're going to watch it, and then we'll talk about it. Yes. Even better than I remembered. This was a pretty, like, well-known cast. We have Christina Ricci, Rosie O'Donnell, Thora Birch, Melanie Griffith, Gabby Hoffman, and Demi Moore, Mm -hmm. and Rita Wilson, Devon Sawa, and then also Cloris Leachman is in it, and I just need to give her a shout out because she was a comedic genius she's in this so great running around but she had off so to her poker much game. energy and she was a oh snappy dresser last but not least brendan fraser as an uncredited war veteran i cannot believe that he was uncredited i think out of all of the cameo appearances this was by far my favorite one and my favorite film altogether out of the cameo appearances. It was really nice that his cameo, I mean, we decided it was about four minutes long. Yes. So there was plenty of time. It was a fairly substantial cameo. It was, there was plenty of dialogue and he had good good interaction with the four girls. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty simple plot. It's like that classic, uh, summer adventure flick, kind of like Stand By Me. It's just about a group of four girls in a neighborhood and they just spend the summer together having seances and mm-hmm. investigating like mysterious deaths and everything. So <laughs> Brendan Fraser played a Vietnam veteran who the girls run into and he's hitchhiking. And so they're kind of like riding their bikes around him and they're like, hey, did you fight in the war? Does your leg still hurt? Um, and then they eventually all sit down on the side of the road on this broken down truck. The reason that his leg was hurting was because he had gotten injured in the war. He did get a purple heart, but his leg injury was what sent him home, which he was really glad about. He was walking with quite a limp. Yes. He was just acting really cool and mysterious. Kind of humoring these young girls Mm -hmm. who must be like 12. He appeared 43 minutes and 50 seconds into the film. And by the 48 minute mark, he was 
he was gone. So the first category is emotional depth. Emotional depth. Um, this one seemed pretty depthy. You know? Yeah. There's a history there to this character, and yeah, he's absolutely. just skimming the surface. Well, and he doesn't want to go into it. He doesn't want right. to go into the trauma of the war. Because, I mean, these girls are young. He gives them these little nuggets of wisdom. You now, what did he say? Like, one thing I learned was your parents aren't always right. Yeah. Mm. And hopefully you can always believe in yourself. Yes. I'm fine with four. I think we should do a four. Yeah. I mean, he was having to answer some pretty hefty questions mm -hmm. in a way that was sensitive to his audience, to his young, the young girls. Yeah. Ma'am count was a zero. Zero ma'ams. Comedic performance. The comment that Chrissy makes, um, she notices that he has an earring in, and she said, my mom said that, what was it, like, only hippies have earrings or something? And then she said something about how um, her mom also said that hippies are sex fiends or Oh, something. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And he kind of like hid a laugh and also thought it was really funny that she said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, these girls are so innocent, but they're trying to be really cool and edgy. Well, and he's not laughing when they're all like they're trying to smoke for and the they, first time they're and they're coughing. coughing and stuff. Yeah. And he just goes with it. And so when they're, the girls are like, okay, we should probably go, and they get on their bikes, he puts his sunglasses on, and he does like a little peace sign. He even thing. says peace. Yeah. <laughs> it was so it's cute. cute. Let's do three. That's okay. Let's... I wasn't rolling out of my chair. No. But... Best actor in a dramatic role. Three. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to explore a lot of it. He left me wanting more. He has a way of doing that. He Physical does. prowess and stunts. The limp, the limp. There was, you know, there was a great effort on his part mm -hmm. to really commit to the limp. Mm -hmm. I almost did a two. Let's do two. Also, I mean, Whitney, the way that he drank that Fanta. No, like really, did you look at that? Thing of beauty. Hair. I mean, it clearly looked like he had been hitchhiking for a while. Who knows when he last washed his hair? All things considered, I liked it. It was immaculately cut. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty immaculately styled. Well, he had hair like all in his face. Yeah, but in a in a in a hot way. Like in a... <laughs> it doesn't look greasy at all. I loved it from the front. I did too. Loved from it from the side. From the side, so I felt like it needs to be a little shorter. The problem that I had with it is that I don't think that is how army guys have their hair cut. Well, yeah, but I mean, how long has he been out of the army? He said that he, it just happened and he got the first plane out. But do you think he meant like it literally just happened or it just happened? I thought he'd been there for like at oh. least a couple months. I, don't I mean, know. he was very scruffy. He was scruffy. Um, and he had like the beginnings of a mustache, mm -hmm. which I didn't love, but I was like, like, it fits the character. Yeah. Present day, if I saw him hitchhiking, I would not pick him up. In 1970, maybe I would have. No, I would not have picked him up. But if I was on my bike, I would have stopped. And I would have shared a cigarette with him and a Fanta. I would have just shared the Fanta. I'm fine with four. I'm, I was going to say, I'm going to fight for this war because from yeah. the front, it was so good. Yeah. I'm, I almost did a four. And there's been a lot of hairstyles on him that I've, or hair, it's really just that way his hair has been cut that mm -hmm. I felt like. It's the uh, cut. It's the cut that's crucial. All right, hidden talents. I um, think that might be a zero. I think, I think it's a zero today. Okay. Swoons. I think at least two of the girls were clearly infatuated with him. I think it was him. two. Yeah. At the end, when they're saying goodbye, they were kind of doing that, the like, mm -hmm. bye, see yeah. you around. Well, and you knew that those two didn't want to leave. I think they yeah. liked them. So let's count it as two. Yeah, two swoons. Okay, temperature. I really liked him in this. Mm -hmm. I liked his character. I liked the way that he moved. I liked the facial hair. And he's a vet. He's an injured vet, yeah. which is like really attractive. I just need to nurture him. I know. I need to take care of him. Just need to take you home. Mm -hmm. Make you feel better. Make you some dinner. I'm really okay with a five or six. This might actually be the best so far. Really? I really Where liked him in Younger and Younger. Oh, we gave him a nine in Younger and Younger, right? 
And a sex and child of darkness. <laughs> Listen, that was okay. a shoulder of greatness. <laughs> and a five on school ties. Okay, let's give him a six. I think he deserves a six. I really, like, I had a crush on him. Plus, I just feel like he needs another point. He's uncredited. Yeah. And he, that just performance deserves we just, some credit. Dancing. He wasn't actually dancing, although the way, the way that, that he, he was walked, walking was it was kind of almost like a dance because dancing. he was like walking and then kind of turning around. Not I, only physically dancing, but dancing with his words. I just feel like we should give him at least a one. A Thank one you. for dancing. And costumes. So it was obviously one outfit. It was pretty grungy looking. So he has. It was a lot of layers. He had green kind of cargo pants with combat boots, dark boots, a denim jacket. Well, he had like a white tank top on with a Some button kind of up a... shirt, but it was open. And then he had a denim jacket on with patches on it. Considering this was the one time that we saw him, his costume really did tell a story. It was very appropriate for the character. Mm -hmm. And it was hot. I'm only saying a three because it was kind of baggy. I guess I just prefer things to be kind of tailored, but you can't be tailored. I could enough. have left the denim jacket out of it. I will. I didn't like the collar. It was a corduroy collar on a denim jacket. It was jacket. a weird it was, it was, collar. It was gross. Let's do three. Okay. All right, and notes. Now and then. It's still enjoyable now. <laughs> Just as much as it was oh my God. then. Fart ass. I think the note is give him some credit. Ooh, yes. See, Winnie, you're, you're the best one at notes. I'm not good at notes. You are. Thank you. Give him some credit. That's perfect. You were asking me during the movie which character I relate to, like at that oh, age. Yeah. I was Chrissy. I was such a scaredy cat. I would check under my bed. I thought alligators were under my bed a lot of the time. But also, I was definitely teeny because I was so overly curious about all things related to sex. Like, Really? Oh my god, I was the one. You never talked to me about it. No, because I think you would have been like, don't talk about that. You you were a Chrissy in that sense, I think. And so, yeah, I never talked to you about it, but to all my friends, oh my god, I was like a little horn dog. No way. <laughs> I'm shocked. I was a pervert. I'm shocked. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? A little bit of Chrissy, just in that I have always been a rule follower. Yes. And I guess a little bit of Teeny and Samantha, mm -hmm. like going out to the graveyard to have a seance is something that I yeah. would probably do. Although I think you've done that. I have. <laughs> so I, I think have. the moral of the story is you can really relate to the girls in this <laughs> yeah. movie. I think I'm more of a Cloris Leachman, to be honest. <laughs> I think out of all the movies we've seen so far, I think this is the one that I can recommend the most. I think so too. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. It's a classic for a reason. Um, and I think that the younger actors are phenomenal. Yeah, I think they're great. And in some ways, I think maybe more so than the 100% portraying them. Next week, we have Kids in the Hall, Brain Candy. And this is an uncredited performance. Um, so this is probably going to be another quick one. And then the week after that, Mrs. Winterborn. Wow. In the meantime, keep it scholarly. Keep it scholarly, folks. Hey.